Hello, everyone. And I'm making this video because I'm trying to make up for the class just now. I don't think I did a good job of explaining what was happening. I do apologize for that. So I'm going to try to go through this explanation of what Dr. Rodriguez is teaching and give a sample implementation on how to do your assignment too. And I hope that this video is um, makes it out there in time so that you can gain some insight from it in order to do corrections to your assignment two for submission tomorrow. So let's get started. So we have this input in the TSB file 352, 242, and 251. And there's this app online that allows us to calculate the inverse k to the minus one of a three by three matrix. And we get this answer, which is uh, zero minus one over eight, two over eight, eight over eight, two over eight, like this. This is one over four, this is one, and this is minus two. So I'm gonna walk through, walk everyone through the entire algorithm. And if I run this program, I get this inverse matrix, which is, um, 2.20 exponential minus 17, which is a very small number. And that is uh, zero right here. And then eight over eight is just one, and then minus 16 over eight is just two. So I guess that all checks checks out. Minus one over eight is minus 0 0.125, and one over four right here. So how does this actually work? What's the magic that goes in it? I have this program that's based on the template that we discussed two weeks ago with some minor tweaks here and there, but I'm sure you can change it. They aren't that important. You can change it to do exactly the same thing. Um, so we have our input matrix TSV, which gets loaded into the matrix object right here. And that becomes the input to this um, method inverse. So inverse, goes down all the way here. So it takes in our it takes in our matrix input and it, it just calls it A and then it declares a temporary like it sets all the values of A to this temporary matrix and it takes temporary as the input to this Gauss Jordan elimination function. Right, and everything is being modified by pointer. That's what this symbol means. I think it's quite ingenious, actually. I don't normally do that in Python, but uh, C++ can modify as pointers. So this is the function that we all want to study, cross Jordan elimination. It takes in this matrix object. And as I mentioned in the last class, we have the diagonals, right, which are just our pivots. So this is three, four, and one are our pivots. Pivot row is zero. Pivot row, pivot column here is zero, zero, one, one, and two, two. And the length here is three by three. So there's this while loop right here. While pivot row is less than a dot get n rows, which is three, and pivot rows is less than n calls, which is also three. So what this line does actually is just saying while zero zero, while one one, and while two two. It'll never go to three three. So we start at zero zero by declare, declaring pivot row equals zero, pivot column equals zero. And then for each one we pivot, right? So it says here pivot. So row column zero zero and what this implementation does, actually, it scans down the column. So for the first one, it looks at 3, 2, and 5. Uh, 0, 1, 2 is 3, 2, and 5. So row 0, row 1, row 2, 3, 2, and 5. And this is a, an example of the shuffling, the interchanging. You know, before you do the reduction, you need to interchange. And it, it really does solve save a few steps actually. So it actually um, using this max underscore val equals val. So these are the vals, three, two, and five. Max val is set as zero, right? And it iterates through all of these, three, two, and five, and it sets max val as the highest. 
right? If val is greater than max val, max val equals val. And uh, iterating through in this for loop and going through these, you should set the max val as five. So what it does is that it scans through this column and wants to find the highest value. It finds five. So it sets that to our new pivot. And how it does that is that it interchanges a dot interchange max row with pivot row. So the max row here is two, two, and pivot row is zero. So it, it flips it, it flips it. So five, two, one. So now our zeroth row has been swapped, has been interchanged with our second row. And then it moves on in this uh, reduction step. Uh, okay, a dot get rows is three, that, that stays the same. Uh, pivot row, we're still on pivot row zero. And pivot val is five, right? After doing the interchange, the pivot val is five. And uh, it iterates through the entire column. It, it iterates through each row, j row equals zero, j row is less than get underscore n rows, j row plus plus, zero, one, and two. And uh, it uses this if j row equals pivot underscore row continue. So what this means is that it will skip the, the pivot row. It will skip this, this five thing. So it will actually attempt to annihilate one and two. It will try to reduce one and two, which is, I printed it out the screen here. And it does this, which is, it has some scale value, right? And this scale value is exactly what we discussed in class, uh, some alpha over beta. And it just adds the entire row. It performs that reduction operation, adding to the entire row and just setting it. To minimize rounding error, set the pivot column value to zero. Yeah, it after setting the other after performing the row forward elimination on this row and this row, it sets. After performing the row forward operations on these two rows, it has 1.2, 1.6, 2.8, .2, 1 and 1.4, it has a hard set on these. And this is to prevent these values from being just some really minuscule thing. Really, and carrying the error forward. Right, so it adds the scale to the row right here. And then it sets this and this to zero. So once it's done that for one and two, it'll move forward. Pivot underscore row plus plus pivot underscore column plus plus, which is just zero plus zero equals to zero plus one for the row and zero equals to zero plus one for the column. So it moves to the next one and then it goes all the way to the top. So now you're at row and column one, one. So it scans down. For some reason, it doesn't scan here. It ignores this one. It just compares between this one and this one. Or actually, it compares between this one and this one. And it does that same comparison where max underscore val equals val. Right. You want to find the max val between 3.2 and 3.8. And if that max value is zero, it will move on. But once <clears throat> it's found the max value is 3.8, what it'll do is it'll go back into that uh, elimination, forward elimination process. And now it'll first interchange. So now our first row, our second row will interchange. So 3.8 and 3.2 will swap. And then it uh, moves into our pivot valve now in this case is 
So this pivot value will always be the highest value, 3.8. And it, and it scans each row. It goes down the column. This guy. It goes down the column by scanning each row. So it skips, in this case, it skips pivot row one. It skips this one. And it wants to eliminate zero and two. And it does that by getting the scale value exactly how we calculated it last time, scale value. And we add it to those rows. We add it to row zero and add it to row two. Right, and that should change this value and this value. It should change these two values. And then we hard set the column, the row pivot column to zero to avoid rounding errors. And then it moves forward, next column, pivot row, pivot column. And that's this value right here. So at this point, right, it doesn't have to run through that max val. It doesn't have to do the max val because looking down, it sees like, oh, this is the last value remaining. And um, it will just proceed. So uh, it, it's the only value, so max val equals to max val. And max val is not equals to zero. It'll go to this, uh, it doesn't need to interchange. I guess you can say it is interchanging, it's just interchanging with itself. So it's not changed. And yeah, it's not changed. As you can see, it's like five, zero, 0 0.42. Even though the interchange is called, I print it out here. It's still the same one as the previous pivot. It's still the same matrix as the previous pivot. And then it does the it does the annihilation, the, the reduction. Um, length is three. Pivot row is two. Basically, it's one one. Zero one two. Yeah, it's two two. My bad. Yeah, pivot row is two, and then uh, pivot value is zero point four. So it it uses this pivot value as I mentioned before. It's done this twice already. Pivot value to calculate the scale, and then you do the flip of the sign, right? And then it applies that to rows zero and one, rows zero and one. Um, basically everything that's been done up until now, on and then I don't think yeah once it moves on after two two it it will it will exit that while loop it will exit this while loop and then once it exits the while loop it enter it enters this for loop where it it enters this for loop where it does some scaling multiply by yeah yeah, it just divides the entire row by the inverse of the, the pivot value. Does some normalized to produce ones on the diagonal. Yep. And after after it reaches this point, it pretty much ends. And then when it ends, it returns its value to that inverse function. Uh-huh. So once that Gauss-Jordan elimination is complete, it just copies out the result and returns it in the inverse object right here, I and B. And that goes back to our main right here, I and V. And then we can just output the inverse matrix like this. And once you output the inverse matrix, you can just multiply it with the input matrix times inverse is equal to the identity. And 
that gets me this identity matrix. And as you can see here, 2.2 exponential minus 16, which are very small numbers and it's close to zero. So I hope that was a really decent explanation of what the Gauss-Jordan process is doing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.